pick a boy, a young boy in this, in this, um, in this auditorium, in this room? Huh? How about, how about, let's just pick this guy right here. Come up here. Okay. Okay. Do you like him? I mean, he's okay, right? Not, not as a boyfriend thing. Do you like him? <laughs> Is he, I mean, would you want to hurt him for no reason at all? <laughs> you may not be the most compassionate person up here. Do you care for his well-being? As, okay, as a Christian, do you care for him? Are you the daughter of Sarah Bateson? Okay. Okay, okay, here's the deal. You're going to have to learn the piano. Okay, go ahead and sit up there. Not you. Up there. Okay. You see this blue tarp? See, today is going to kind of be a children's sermon, but over the next couple of weeks, this justifies me making some very messy sermons. And I didn't want to waste this time and space. So here's what's going to happen, okay? I'm going to give you at least one time through, and then they're going to be the judge. If you, play, if you learn this fast, okay, then he walks away dry. But if you fail, I'm going to pour ice water down his back. <laughs> you like this? What? <laughs> All right, Margie, you got about 30 seconds or so. Show her to play it. What, you, um, we need to, is there a towel or a paper towel? Can, okay, you learn. I will run. I know where something is. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I guess this is all we have. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Have you learned it? No, put this over your eyes. You don't want to see this coming. Okay. Good, keep those up here. Okay. Man, you might be safe. Okay. You close your eyes. Okay, she did a very good job. So, by a show of hands, how many of you think she did a good enough job not to punish this young man? Okay, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. You have a lot of support here. Go ahead and take... No, I'm not... <laughs> Calm down. Close your eyes. Put that over your eyes. By a show of hands, how many of you think she did not do a good enough job? <laughs> Go get a towel. Go on. Go get a towel. That's, the, that's why we have fun over there with the kids, church. All right. All right. Uh, now, how many of you think that I did a bad job teaching her? Or how many think that that was a good... Huh? She, you did... Have you ever played a piano before? So you just got this natural inclination to play music, don't you? 
Uh, where's Margie? Mark, because Margie teaches. Margie, did my teaching methodology help out in any way whatsoever into helping her play the piano? So actually, instead of a motivator for her to do it, it was probably, it probably didn't work out to the, the best right there. So Margie, what would she need? What would she need? What do you think she needs for her to become an awesome piano player like you? Tell me a few things that she would need. You would need Motivators. practice. Motivators, practice yeah. Okay. What else do you think, Connor? What do you think she needs? <laughs> okay. A desire to do it, Gabe. A good teacher, a good teacher, a desire, a practice, anything else. What? A piano? Anything else? Encouragement. Encouragement? I, actually, she did a I, I, very good job. Very good job. So anything else? Here are the three things that I, I, I kind of put down that she would need. She would need, kids, there's a test. Ready? Ready? And if you fail the test, uh, Zach's going to get more water poured on him. Or maybe I'll pick one of you at random. Yeah. You can tell who are our boys. Sit down, guys. You need a teacher. Sit down. Put your hands down. You need a teacher. You need to know the rules. And you need to practice. Those were the three I picked. Yes, sir. <laughs> you fit in just right with the rest of these guys here. You know what? There's a lot of people with toes right there. So those three things. And you know what I have thought? That that preaches to life as well, doesn't it? If you really want to do well in life, you need three things, I think. You need a good teacher. You need to know the rules, and you need to what, kids? Have fingers. You need to practice. Okay, sit down. Yeah, you're going to get be called up here in a second again. <sighs> Obviously, though, not all teachers are good, huh? Was I a good teacher when it came to playing the piano? No, but I was more fun than the average teacher, huh? Right? So, in life, are there bad teachers out there? Yeah. Yes. What do you mean, no? You're right. Any, buddy, any teacher that watches Hello Kitty is a bad teacher. You know what Jesus said? He said that you need to watch out because there are some people out there that want to try to teach you and make, he says, converts of you. But when they do you, you they make you, and I'm about to say, uh, uh, a Bible word here, twice as much the sons of hell as they are. So that there are a lot of bad teachers out there. But one of the questions I have for you young people is, are there any good teachers out there? Huh? Yes? Who's a good teacher? Miss Pam. Grandpa. Who else? Miss Pam, Grandpa, and me. You know what the Bible actually tells us? And Margie. Actually, they're not good teachers. I, I'm not making this up. I'm sorry. They're not good teachers. It wasn't me. Hold on. Don't look at me like, I know you're looking at me like, well, my grandpa's a great teacher. But hold on. Just wait one second. There was this rich guy, okay? Check it out. Please just listen to me because this isn't me. This is Jesus talking, okay? There was this rich guy, and he walks up to Jesus. And, and he wanted to know, pay attention, Connor. There's a test. He wanted to know, he, he, um, how is it that you inherit eternal life? So he walks up to Jesus, and he asks the question. He says, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus asked a question. Does anyone know what that question is? He says, why do you call me good? There is only one person who is good, and that's God. Now, I had a bad teacher one time come up to me and tell me, because Jesus said that, Jesus 
was not God. But actually, he was just asking a question that he wanted the, the rich man to know what it was that he was saying. Here's my question to you. Is Jesus good? Yeah. How is he good? Always does the right thing. He always does the right thing. Anyone else? I want a young hand up. How, how is Jesus good? Yes. Yes, Jesse. How is he good? Very good. Yes. Yes. Because he's good. One other. Yes. Colleen says he always tells the truth. He always tells the truth. It, it, it says that without Jesus, nothing that has been made was been made. It says about God that, and it says about Jesus that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. It says about Jesus, listen up, young people, there's always a test. Um, it says about Jesus that he who knew no sin whatsoever became sin for us. He didn't do anything bad. He didn't do anything wrong. It says about Jesus that everything, or everything, it says about God, it says everything that comes down to us is from the uh, Father of the heavenly lights are good things that blesses us. God is good, and Jesus, the Son of God, is God incarnate. So only Jesus is the good teacher. Now, I think it's a good idea. Alice is a teacher. Stand up, Alice. We'll make, we'll, we'll, we'll. how many of you, all right, my son is in your class. Is Alice a good teacher? Okay, by my definition, of course, no. You know why she's a good teacher? Because she follows who? She follows Jesus, and she shows you how to do that. So, in life, if we want to win, we need a really good teacher, and only God, I think, is, is the best teacher. But we also need to know what? We, we know he's a good teacher, but we also need to win in life. What else is there? We have to know the what? The rules. Okay, I'm going to tell on myself real quick. I have started dieting. That's right, very soon I am going to be an Adonis of a preacher. Walk in, bam, there he is, look at him. You know what I struggle with the most? I do struggle with that, but not the most. There's the rule that you can't eat past a certain time. And these kids don't know that rule. And then like last night, he made, what, what kind of, that was a home run pizza? Andrew bought a home run pizza. Have anybody like the home run pizza? With the sausage on it and the cheese was glistening and somebody put a fan behind it and they drew the air downstairs. And I'm sitting there, I'm arguing with John LaFont on the back and forth like no you're wrong he's like no you're wrong and you don't know latin and it was all kinds of weird stuff and and then and then i smelled and then i got up and, and, and i floated upstairs and i looked down and there were six pieces left and then because i'm a good father i went into andrew's room and i said andrew by any chance are you going to eat the whole pizza and he says dad no eat everything that you want i'm like well son i'm on a diet you should tell me no he said eat everything that you want so then i was thinking how many people in china were going to starve if i didn't eat this <laughs> that's what my mom always told me I'd have a bunch of food on my plate. She said, people in China are starving. You eat the rest of that. So the rest of it, not only didn't like it, I felt guilty because I had eaten it. <laughs> so I went back in there, and I knew the Bible verse I should have said. You know what the Bible verse I should have said was? Man does not live on bread alone, <laughs> but on the very words of God's. But I didn't say that. You know what I did? I just had one piece. And I walked down, and I sat there, and I ate my piece, and I felt guilty. And then as I was feeling guilty, I said, you know what? If I'm going to go ahead and blow it, I might as well blow it right. So I went up there, and I got a second piece. And I came back down. I only had the two extra pieces. But I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Uh, I find that is true in life, too. I do best in life. Listen to me, young people. Gabe, listen. I do best in life when I know the rules. 
For example, Connor today has already tempted me to beat him. <laughs> I really have to... <laughs> What's the Bible verse I said I'm, I'm struggling with there today in Bible study, John? It's, oh, fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. That's the rule. I know what I want to do with Connor, <laughs> but I know the rule too. Um, there's lots of rules. Oh, I like this one. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. What is it? Have you ever heard that one rule that they say, if, there, if you don't have anything to say... Don't say it. You know what the Bible says? Find something nice to say. That's the rule. That's the rule. Lots of them. How many of you ever get worried that I might pour ice water down your back in the middle of a sermon? I like to quote Jesus' rule. He was the first one who wrote that beautiful song. In your... Life, you have some troubles, but when you worry, you make it double. Don't worry. He said it differently, of course. I like to know the rules. But is knowing the rules good enough, guys? Is it okay just to know the rules? Here, let me, let me, let me, let me illustrate real quick. I don't, I don't have anything to illustrate with this. Jesus said this, okay, here's a test. Here's, here's your test, young people, okay? You're going to tell me the difference between the wise man and the fool, okay? The difference between the wise man and the fool, all right? Jesus said, there are people out there that hear my words. They don't do what I say. They're like a fool who built their house upon the what? sand you guys are good but then a storm comes and because there's no foundation the hand the, the house goes boop. okay but a wise man is like the man who built their house on a what on a rock because they hear my words and they do what I say and when a storm comes their house stays standing all right I need another volunteer. I, I want to be a Connor, come here. This is more of uh, for your daddy than anybody else. Sit down. Hold on. I know. I don't want you to get wet. Okay. Sit down. Sit down. Connor? Okay. In both cases, you, you, you're going <laughs> to... No, you're going to pick somebody to answer the question, okay? All right? You're going to pick somebody to answer the question. What? There's, there's going to be two questions, okay? They have to get them both right. Okay. The wise man and the fool... Ready? Yay. No, no, hold on. All right. Is, who do you want to answer the question? Yay. All right. Gabriel. Ooh, that's cold. Which one, the wise man or the fool, heard what Jesus said? Was it the wise man or the fool? Fool. Okay. Somebody else. Okay, which one heard what Jesus said? Was it the wise man or the fool? No, no that answer's already been given. What's the wise man? <laughs> which John? Which one heard? It's a trick question. Ah, oh, very good. Go get the trier. <laughs> Okay. 
The answer is they both heard it. What was the difference between the wise man and the fool? What? Listen up, guys. What was the difference between the wise man and the fool? Very good. Would you like to pick somebody that I throw ice water on? No, we'll get to somebody later. All right, listen. The difference was one, listen, it is not, sit down, Connor, it is not just good enough, it is not just good enough to know the rules, but you have to what? Good teacher, you have to know the rules, and you have to practice. practice. You know what? Hey, young people, listen, that is the difference. That's what being a disciple really is, okay? It's practice. How many of you, this is a serious question, I want, you to, I want you to answer it honestly, and I want our adults to answer. How many of you know the rules of being a Christian, but sometimes you break the rules? Yeah, every single one of us. You know, sometimes I know that I need to pray for my family, but sometimes I'm not praying for my family. I know what God says on how to be a good dad, but sometimes I'm not a good dad or a husband or an employee and stuff. Sometimes I know that I need to minister to other people, but sometimes I don't do that just because, you know what, I'm tired or I just don't feel like it. But there are other times that I know that I should pray and I do pray for somebody. And there's other times that I know I should read my Bible and I do read my Bible. And what I have found is that those times that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, I get, I guess, more mature in my Christian walk, and I become better at it. It's practice. It's like my diet. I failed last night when that boy tempted me with pee. I should pour ice water on him, shouldn't I? Yeah. Anybody object? No. Just two. Um, I failed. Sit down. I failed in my diet. Should I quit my diet? I just do it again. And that, I think that's one of the most important things that we can do as Christians. Is even when we fail, we ask for forgiveness. And it says this in the Bible, that Jesus will always forgive us. Always forgive us when we ask First John. You can read it yourself. So let me share the Bible passage that I want to share with you. And then I will let you go for the day. Okay? It's in James chapter 1. Find a Bible, go there, James chapter 1. Connor, we'll ground you, sit down. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 22. Are you ready? Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the world word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has learned but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. Isn't that a strange sentence? Let me read it again to you. But the person, the man, I don't think Jesus would get us mad at us if we said the woman, but the man, woman, who looks intently into the perfect law and get, that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. How many of you adults think that a law gives us freedom? Doesn't that sound strange? How many of you are like me that when you get on the highway and you see that speed limit sign that says, sick, Krista's waving already, that says 65, you don't feel very free. Sarah and Krista, you guys should do a duet. I can't drive 65. What used to take five hours to get to LA, now I don't even know the words anymore. That's how old I'm getting. Do you feel free? So how does knowing God's rules and the laws make us free? Come here, young lady. What 
I needed an armrest. Listen, kids, listen. Are you ready? Can you play Bach's Fifth Symphony right now? So no, right? Can you play a, a huge song for us right now on the piano? No? So, but if I sent you to the piano and just said, go ahead and play for a few minutes, would you be able to bang away at the keys and make lots of noise? Yeah. So even though you're not, you could go and try it, but you wouldn't really be free to play it. You couldn't make beautiful music, right? But you could play chaos, right? Well, that's what it means right here, guys. You could live your life chaotically and do what you want, but you'll never make beautiful music in life. But if you get you a teacher like Jesus, who is good, and you learn what he says, and you practice over time, as you'll be able to play that piano beautifully, you'll be able to live your life beautifully. Amen.